Hello, my name is Carlotta and I'm a member of Pathways Smart Makati. I'm also a graduate of Choices Seminar in 2018. I was supposed to be a Claire. My mom wanted to name me after St. Claire because she went to a Franciscan school in her childhood. I'm the only daughter and the only child between my parents who fell in love in a whirlwind romance, got married but separated after just over two years of being together. My mom, a 23-year-old university beauty queen and civil engineer, could no longer stand my father's infidelity. And so she left, bringing me along with her. When I was six years old, my mom told me of a time when I was about two that I chased after my dad, who at that time hardly came home from his work in the airline industry. He went home that day to pick up a set of fresh clothes and was in a hurry to leave again. I chased after him, but he had bigger steps. I was a toddler with shaky steps, so I, I fell. My dad looked back for a second, turned, and left. He didn't even pick me up to soothe me even as I cried. That was the last straw for my mom. For most part of my child, I remember that we moved a lot. My mom and I lived in rented rooms, sharing an apartment with another family or other tenants. Perhaps it was these living conditions which made me vulnerable to unwelcome and inappropriate attention from some male housemates at that time. I was about seven years old, and the other time it happened, I was about nine. My mom never knew, I guess at that time, I didn't really know how to tell her. I was too young and I was afraid. What would she think? Would she think it was my fault? Later in life, I felt that telling her of those experiences in my past would make her feel that she failed at protecting me, which is not true, considering all her sacrifices in raising me on her own. Those unwelcome incidents left me feeling confused and for the most part disgusted. I was angry with a grown man in my life as a child who I thought would care for me and protect me, but did otherwise. I was disgusted with what's left of my body after it was touched inappropriately. It made me fearful and confused as to why grown men would do such things to small girls. Growing up, I started to have questions. Was I that worthless? Was I unlovable that even my own father didn't pick me up when I fell on the floor as a toddler? The hurt and emptiness manifested all the more much later as an adult. At 20, I got married because I got pregnant a couple of months into dating. Needless to say, it was a shallow attraction which didn't even have the foundation of friendship. After five years of being together, my husband never applied for a job. Coming from a broken family, I had this image in my head, an ideal family. But year after year, that image of a little family began to look bleak and blurred. I was pregnant with our second child, when I found out that he was into drugs with our neighbor. That was the last straw. I thought, walang babaeng nagpakasal na ang hangad ay makipaghiwalay lang sa huli. This wasn't my fault. With provisions from our parents, our own house, brand new car, help and diaya in tow, our friends say mukha daw kaming pamilya sa advertisement. It was a photo-finished life, but the lies have to stop. I was a disillusioned bride who didn't give much thought in entering other relationships after my marriage in search of a home for my heart. I was young, confident, and advancing in my career. When the relationship would turn sour, I'd say, yung pinakasalan ko nga iniwan ko, ikaw pa. With every heartbreak from broken relationships, I became more brazen and carefree, as if Pandora's box was opened and made me sink deeper in scene. 
I used to say, sa larangan ng pag-ibig, I must have played all the roles. Iniwan, nang iwan, niloko, nang loko, the wife, the other woman. Thinking that these experiences made me smarter in life, but on the contrary, I can only say this today with great regret and embarrassment, but it's only in the hope of declaring the power of a merciful and loving God that I am able to recount and admit all this to you today. My life took a nosedive when my live-in partner of two years died of cancer in my arms. In hindsight, it must have been God begging me to end my sinful ways. But I was far too deep in my sins to make sense of what was God trying to do. I was too focused in my pain and my grief and carried on with my life, pursuing and looking for happiness, trying to fill that void with alcohol, pleasure, money, and purposelessness. I could finish two packs of cigarettes a day and sometimes more, depending on how depressed I was. I would have three bottles of wine to myself and still be standing. I turned to hard liquor and would often drink to the point that I would have to crawl to get to bed. When I am out, I would drive drunk, stopping the car in the middle of the road to puke, and then drive again to the horror of my passengers. I was probably that friend your parents would not want you to hang around with. I remember telling a family friend who was trying to talk some sense into me and who was telling me of how my mother had been suffering due to my wayward lifestyle. I would say, Nagreklamo pa siya, hindi na nga ako lasing araw-araw, thrice a week na nga lang. You know, but fortunately and because God is so good, He's a good shepherd who would not stop searching for our lost lamb even if he has thousands in his flock. It doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done, who did what to you. It was through the witness of a high school batchmate that I started to wonder if perhaps it was the presence of a God that was missing in my life. Whenever he chanced upon a homeless person, he would buy this person food and take time to talk to them. One time he mentioned that he would be in a retreat over the weekend. At that time I was in sales and my mind was occupied with work 24-7. At the very least, I was starting to think of the future. But I was living in fear. I was fearful on how I can provide for my growing children. And what of my aging parents? It amazed me that this person was so dedicated to his work and family. Yet he still finds time to serve in community and pursue a personal relationship with God. He had invited me to join one of those religious talks, but because I didn't want to hear of to him to hear of my past, should I be asked to share, I declined. But in my heart, I had wanted so much to listen to what God may have to tell me in that talk. He then invited a friend of mine to attend Pathways. But because this friend didn't want to go alone, I had to come. So I went thinking, just this one time. At the end of that meeting, Ate Luis Salvador bid me farewell as I walked out with Balik Kaha, and I had been a consistent attendee ever since. With the grace of God, I became a Choices graduate in 2018. But that road didn't come easy. At one point, I lost my job and was finding it hard to difficult or difficult to attend the talks in Makati, coming from Tatipuna. With less resources, I was tempted to forego the talks. But God made it possible for me to complete the series, and I was able to attend the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, for He gave me the gift of tongues, the gift of unintelligible words and thrones which serve as a direct prayer to God. It was God's perfect timing to me that I would be surrounded with godly people during that challenging time. It would remind me of God's love for me, pray for me, 
my discussion group leader, Eileen Ormita, at one time even fasted for me. At one time when I approached her because of a concern. They would even help me in my job search. So my prayer life grew from a five-minute litany of sleepy intentions to many pockets of time looked forward to throughout the day to spend in the presence of a loving and faithful God. I started going for daily Mass and would find tears silently rolling down my cheeks, especially in consecration. I've also observed that it has become difficult to pray the sorrowful mysteries or the way of the cross without tearing up. I guess anyone who came to a realization of God's profound love and mercy would not be able to help to be in tearful gratitude in those moments. Yes, God made me more iyak. But because He was softening my heart, the heart hardened from painful experiences and hardened because of my own sins. Because He was working on giving me a new heart. I started listening to praise music too, and somehow I've lost the taste for some secular music or media that are too provocative or would disturb the senses. One time, a worship song touched me. The lyrics went, uh, My soul is restless until it rests in you. I learned that it was St. Augustine who said that line, and the day that I heard that song was his feast day. One time, I received a company offer letter on September 29, which is the Feast of the Archangels. The same company asked me to report on October 2, the Feast of the Holy Guardian Angels. So these are just some of the countless encounters with saints and angels, which still wonderfully happen to this day. I know it's God's way of telling me that I did not embark on this faith journey at all. God has not only given me the gift of community, of sisters and brothers, constantly intercede and pray for me, but He has also given me the friendships of the saints and angels. He has also invited me to know more about Him and to serve Him through different ministries. I am now part of teaching uh, ministry and the healing and intercessory ministry. He continues to invite me in deepening my faith and knowledge of Him through opportunities of learning, Bible study, Christian life talks, and serving in community, or simply sometimes spending quiet time with Him in adoration. He has showered me with the grace of love uh, to partake in the sacraments which I thirst for. Little by little, the Holy Spirit is transforming my heart and the ways I have lived my life. The once Pasaway daughter is now one who delights in serving and helping in the family. Gone are those drunk driving days or days that I would burst into anger, screaming and cursing or breaking things. There's more patience, there's more love and understanding in my relationships. I have started to see less of me, less of the need to fill me. Instead, there is a calling to offer all of me. All this for the glory of God's kingdom. I have learned to tithe too. And because all these, you know, our talents, time, skills, and our resources, they all come from God anyway. I would not have even a single second to take a breath if God has not gifted it to me. With tithing and intentional charity, I call it intentional acts of kindness, I feel more blessed than the time I didn't know how to give. I take no credit for any of the good that happened after my encounter with Jesus. It's only by the grace that these fruit manifest in my life. I describe my faith journey as a beautiful eternal rose. It is glorious and it brings so much joy as it is, but it continues to bloom, unfolding its beauty petal after petal. It is the same with how God unfolds His nature to me. 
When I discovered the many names that he is called, I fell in love with each and every name and find so much pleasure saying it in prayer. God gifted me also with the conviction of his true and living and resurrected body one Easter. God makes himself known to me through the challenges I still meet with family life, with work life, and the occasional struggle with loneliness. But life struggles and suffering now make sense. I have an assurance that I am always in the best possible place, at the best possible time, whatever the circumstances. Everything makes sense when seen through the lens of the cross, because Jesus Christ, my Lord, my God, has died and risen to save me. I am no longer a slave to my desires. He is the Redeemer and King who has broken the chains of my sinfulness and has set me free. I close in thanksgiving. God, our loving Father, thank you for your forgiveness, for your mercy, and for healing my woundedness. Thank you for your untiring love, for your patience and faithfulness. Thank you for saving me and for calling me back to you. You are amazing. You are wonderful. You are all-powerful and infinitely good. When the world called me by my sins, and I had begun to believe it, you gave me Jesus to remind me of who I am in you. In my brokenness, you loved me. In my wretchedness, you embraced me. You showed me that there is no darkness you will not go to to find me. When my life is broken and I was in despair, you carried my burden. When I was down in the valley, Lord, you gave me light and you gave me hope and strength. When I was lost, there was nothing left of me. You took my hand and you told me that you make all things new. Thank you, Father, for the gift of starting all over again, this time with you.